Hey guys, Josh Stern here with the Stern team, Keller Williams Real Estate. My focus is to keep you all educated about everything real estate, both locally and nationally today. Um, just so when it comes to buying a home or investing in a home or selling your own home, you guys make a good decision. So again, today I wanted to share some national numbers with you so we can understand uh, maybe a little bit more about how unemployment and our current economy is shaping the real estate market. So uh, first, we should start with COVID. It's not news that cases have uh, truly skyrocketed over the last couple of months. The good news is that there are two vaccines and an accurate home test, uh, which will be available by spring or summer. When the vaccines become available, they're most likely going to go immediately to our frontline workers, hospital medical workers, for example. Uh, then they'll be given to people that are sick or at risk, um, the elderly, right? Uh, then uh, hopefully the education system so we can keep kids in school and keep teachers safe. Uh, then, then we're not sure exactly what's going to happen after that. Uh, but what we do believe is that it'll take a year or more uh, to get the vaccine out and the tests in, in, in a way that will actually make a big difference. So 2021 is going to be a pivot year. 2022 will be a very important year for just being focused and staying ahead of the curve with the economy. 2023 is likely when things are just going to go back to normal. So it's going to be a little time, you guys. Um, so this image here demonstrates our national uh, unemployment rates currently in purple. And the teal line is a comparison of what unemployment rates looked like during the Great Recession. It is considered acceptable unemployment when our rates are at or below 6%. So we're not quite there yet. But look at how quickly we snap back with jobs in comparison to the long drawn out rates during the Great Recession, which was the longest recovery ever for a recession. So quite unlike our two month recession of 2020. Now, this image shows us the industries that are hit hardest by the 2020 recession. You can see that there are really three industries that are going to need a lot of attention in order to bounce back. That's retail, leisure and hospitality, and then transportation. Um, these are also where people, you know, get together the most. So hopefully with the vaccine uh, quicker and more accessible and more accurate testing, we'll see these industries begin to rebound and people have some confidence. Uh, an interesting side note here, people are saving money at a higher rate than ever. Um, they have discretionary income, but they're not going out to eat. They're not traveling on planes. They're not going out uh, into retail outlets or concerts or, or shows. Um, Okay, this next graph is updated. It shows us unemployment and housing by age. The 25 to 34 uh, age group has a 7.3% unemployment rate, which is, it's not a great number, but it is certainly not a horrible recession type number. The 35 plus group has a 5.7% uh, uh, rate of unemployment. And remember, the magic number is sort of 6%. And above that, we start to have issues with employment. It's the youngest that are truly hit the hardest right now, uh, but yet they're not the primary home buyers. This is one of the reasons why the housing market has remained so strong. Um, let's take a look at gross domestic product going all the way back to 1989. It is considered a healthy economy when gross domestic product is around two. The last two quarters of 2019 are really good. And then we got hit with an asteroid. With the stimulus, you can see that our economy had come roaring back. This also gives us some perspective from 1989. There's no worse overall GDP than where we are currently. And that is a really tough spot to be in. The question is truly what is gonna happen next year. So we think that 2021 is gonna be a solutions year where we begin to dig ourselves out of this mess 2022 is when the solutions become mainstream. And then 2022, 23, we begin to breathe and move about the country as if, you know, pre-pandemic time. Uh, the thing of it is that real estate nationally is doing better than any prior recorded year. In fact, nationally, we're up 2.3% higher in sales volume than we were in 2019. And you can see that the national home price averages are also up considerably. And the orange line uh, really demonstrates the interest rates which have been driving a lot of the purchasing decisions for home buyers who can buy. So interest rates have hit historic lows a dozen times so far since the beginning of the year. And as I write this blog, the interest rate is like two and a half percent.
So we really need mostly to get some entry level buyers back into the market to have a healthy market and we need to get a little bit more inventory for them. Since the beginning of time, well located real estate simply appreciates. Just remember that. It's a fundamental truth. If you're buying real estate that is not in a great location, you just need to plan on holding on to that real estate for maybe 10 years or more. Otherwise, you're likely just gonna continue to see price increases across the board. The biggest challenge buyers are facing is getting their offers accepted. So inflation, employment, GBD or GDP, excuse me, are the government's trackers. GDP of 2% or more, that's good. Inflation at 2% or less, that's good. Unemployment rates at 6% or less, that's good. Uh, the cost of like money, regulation, monetary policy, which is in a sense the ability to print money, are the tools that the government will use to assist the economy. Now, assuming uh, by the time you watch this, Biden has become the president, and this may be truly official for the third time uh, by that time, um, we'll likely see interest rates begin to go up just a little bit as Democrats work to control inflation. The truth you guys need to realize is moderately higher interest rates are not a bad thing for the long run. Uh, nationally, you can see our, our housing inventory levels are at record lows. We were already low on housing inventory in 2019. Now look at the purple side of the graph. That's this year's inventory levels nationally. And by the way, in Utah right now, we are currently at a 1.5 month supply of homes on the market. And to put this in perspective for you guys, a normal market will generally have between four and six months supply of inventory. So we are well short of where we should be in terms of new construction housing starts. I think we've been off by more than two million since the end of the recession. And we just haven't seemed to be able to pick things up at a quick enough clip for buyers who are entering into home ownership. And finally, we can take a look at loan delinquency rates. Normal delinquency rates are about 1% historically. Um, we had 9.5% loan delinquency rates during the height of the Great Recession. 50% of all sales during that time were like short sales or foreclosures. Uh, this time around, more people have more equity. And we're hoping to see these delinquency rates fall even more as the economy begins to reopen. We know that a lot of the reason for the delinquency rates right now is because people have taken advantage of the forbearance part of the CARES Act to avoid foreclosure while they're in financial distress. Um, we know that of those that are in forbearance, um, the, you know which industries uh, they're in, that, the, the ones that we previously talked about that have been uh, affected the most by the COVID pandemic. Anyway, I really do appreciate you guys watching it. I know it's a lot of data and a lot of pretty graphs. If you have any really tough questions uh, that we can handle on our blog, send me an email. Um, if you're needing help with your own real estate goals, please just give us a call.